So there are times that I think corporations are to blame for the state of modern gaming. And there are other times that I think that gamers are to blame for the state of modern gaming. And when I watch the sickening hype merchants, who seem to share my audience somewhat, cover the recent Pantheon announcement, I realize that sometimes gamers are just to blame for their own goddamn stupidity. Can you say goddamn in the start of a YouTube video now? I don't, I don't care. This channel's not monetized. Like and subscribe to get it the way, boys. But anyways, this is a quick video. I've been absolutely sick as hell lately from this weird virus that's knocked me out. It seems to be happening this winter a lot. Anyways, I did want to get this one video out because the Pantheon update is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. They just can't stop doing it. You're up to something. Why would you say that? Because you're always up to something. And the fact that there are YouTubers that people actually subscribe to that are covering this in a positive light makes me, as someone whose primary interest as a consumer is that I love games, I love the way games tell stories, and I like to defend consumers so that good developers get rewarded for being good developers and bad developers get punished for being bad. This destroys my goddamn mind. Huh? Who? Barney. He's the guy who tipped me off to Pepe Sylvia. Barney? Who the hell is Barney? You don't see Barney. Oh, shit. What the hell did he? So, I've covered Pantheon a lot on this channel. It was a game I was really hyped about. I was going to throw a sizable amount of my money at it, and in the end, uh, good judgment got the better of me. No offense to you if you've backed the game, but I did not, and I'm very glad in hindsight that I did not. We all live and learn. Anyways, so let's do a quick recap on the recent history of Pantheon, and I'll try and avoid just my rage at the YouTube hype merchants defending it, and I'll just, I'll just be polite. I'll just, I'll, I can do that. <clears throat> all right, let's go. So the TLDR, if you're one of my subscribers that has never seen this game before and is wondering what the drama is in the history, well, Pantheon was kickstarted over, ten, well, I think now exactly 10 years ago. The game has never come out. It was meant to be, uh, it was uh, originally fronted by Brad McQuaid, the, um, Permit, like, and even even it's it, it was it's been a weird it's, these past few months and uh, knowing the designer behind EverQuest, and the game just never went anywhere. Recently, though, I covered a new drama as the game was trying to redesign itself in a traditional bait and switch that we've seen from almost every Kickstarter MMO, where they deliver a different game than initially uh, suggested, so that they can get out of their contractual or semi-contractual requirements to deliver something for all the money that they were given by their pledges. They realized, seeing videos like mine and loads of other people in the uh, MMORPG community, that this was not going to work. And so they've now backtracked. And we've seen, like, what's it now, like four or five months of peddling between different ideas. And now they've decided they're going to release the game to everyone that's pledged to them. But they're going to do it in a way that unless you're a fanboy of this game, would blow your mind. If a AAA company did what I'm about to describe... Everyone would absolutely flip out and call them out on every aspect of it. But not Pantheon. No, no, no. There's still people that will defend this game even after the bait and switch. No, no, no. You know, no, 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 no. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's all going to be fine. No, it's not. So the plan for Pantheon now is that instead of releasing a full MMORPG, which is what they promised for a decade, they're going to be played in seasons. And I shall now read to you because... I've developed a habit of this, of reading Pantheon's announcements in an ironic, semi-transatlantic accent. Play Pantheon while it's still in development. Join thousands of other pledges in-game for a front-row seat to experience Terminus expanding. I again, that's not a grammatical sentence. You can't experience... Yeah. Explore significant new content updates in every six-week season. For the first time, all pledges have a period they can play the game. Supporter pledges play one week every season. Champion pledges play two weeks every season. And VIP pledges have full-time access for non-stop exploration, discovery, and adventure. Chapter 1, Season 1, Into the Pass. Are you kidding me? They are literally 
gating full access to their alpha 10 years into development behind being a VIP pledge. Now, for those of you that are in my audience that are watching and thinking, oh, man, Banjo, you're really flipping out over this one. You've really goddamn lost it in this video. I mean, that seems pretty reasonable, right? Like all games charge for early access. And maybe they just want to gate it. Well, first of all, there's no reason to gate content behind how much you've pledged. Either you give your pledges access to the game, which they should have done in the start, or you don't. AAA Game Studios do that? Yeah. Blizzard do that? Yeah. But people shouldn't do it. It's terrible for consumers. But in the case of Pantheon, it's way worse than that because we need to look at the price points of what they're doing, which is absolutely vile. What they're doing is that the lower tiers go from, I think, uh, yeah, off the top of my head, 50 to 700 or $500. But to get VIP access so that you can play the quote-unquote season as long as you want is I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause and let you, my viewer, think. Let's wait, wait for it. $750. Going all the way up to, I think, I don't know if the current pledges are blocked out, but I think it's around 10000 now. They literally decided to pivot from a bait and switch to releasing drip and drop little tidbits of the game and time gating your access to it behind how much money you gave them. If you, if you accept this as a gamer, you're the problem. You're the problem. Uh, and I'm going to check out because I can't be screaming this loud late at night. But this is absolutely the most it, – it, it, watching people that I've criticized on my channel before, various, you know, ginger um, MMO YouTubers and other people, I, I'm just uh, – I'm just I'm, – I'm, if you're okay with this, I don't know how you can ever defend consumers again. It, it's, it is that bad. Um, yeah. It, it every, every day, I every time I make a Pantheon video, I say this is the last Pantheon video. And every time the developers of Visionary Realms do just something new weird to the point where I think a lot of like bigger YouTubers don't even cover them because it's just considered a niche cult thing where they just, yeah, Visionary Realms do weird stuff anyways. But I can't stop. I'm an addict of their weirdness. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for the lack of videos, guys. I've been feeling like crap, uh, bad flu. You probably tell it in my voice. You watch my channel, anyways. But I, you know, those of you who subscribe and stuff, I love you guys, and I'll I'll try and get, get some better videos out uh, sooner when I'm 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 my work's done for this month and I'm feeling better. And uh, see you around. Peace.